There are now 92 moons orbiting Jupiter as a result of the discovery of 12 additional moons. For this, now Jupiter is a planet with the greatest number of natural satellites in our solar system. How were these moons found, and what names will be given to them? Let's investigate. It is amazing that 400 years after Galileo first noticed Jupiter's four largest moons, we are finding satellites on this gas giant. Yet in truth, Jupiter is a planet that has always astounded scientists with a great variety of objects orbiting it, including thousands of Trojan asteroids, artificial satellites larger than planets, such as Ganymede, and a ring of asteroids that cannot be seen with telescopes. It is to be expected that we will occasionally find brand new bodies orbiting this gigantic giant. A team from the Carnegie Institute for Science in Washington, D.C., led by astronomer Scott Shepard, discovered the new satellites in March 2017. Together with the Victor M. Blanco telescopes on Cerro Tololo and the Magellan Telescope, all of which are situated in Chile's Atacama Desert, the finding was made using the Subaru Telescope, which is situated in Hawaii. A new 570 megapixel camera dubbed DE Cam was added to the Victor Blanco Telescope in 2012, allowing for the observation of very dim celestial objects like asteroids or the natural satellites revolving around massive planets like Jupiter. Shepard originally noticed the moons while searching for the fictitious planet 9, which is thought to exist beyond Pluto. Shepard noticed an object passing in front of the telescope while looking for the elusive Planet 9, however it was actually a much smaller and nearer object than Planet 9. It was determined that this object did not appear to be orbiting the Sun as it appeared to be very close to the asteroid belt when it measured its orbit. The planets and their natural satellites are the only celestial bodies that do not revolve around the Sun. There was only one possibility since that object was not a planet, but it was important to confirm the information before drawing any judgments. Why not earlier? Why has news of the discovery of Jupiter's satellites just surfaced if it was made in 2017? Astronomers weren't totally sure if they were satellites, which is the cause. Natural satellites orbit planets, whereas asteroids orbit the Sun. This is the major distinction between the two. The distinction between asteroids and natural satellites can be hazy, especially when it comes to big planets. Because the images produced by telescopes and astronomical observatories are not as high definition as you might think, they are simply isolated points of light against a dark background when astronomers find new objects in the solar system, they must first study them for a considerable amount of time in order to determine their orbit, trajectory, size, and direction. However, this process becomes more challenging the further it is from the item. The satellites that Shepard's team found were not an exception. After collecting their data, the information was forwarded to other telescopes, including Magellan at the Las Campanas Observatory in Chile, so that they could confirm the location of the first item. The team has to watch the object for at least a year and confirm its orbit in order to confirm that it is a satellite orbiting Jupiter and not an asteroid. Such discoveries in the solar system are verified by the Minor Planet Center, which is run by the International Astronomical Union at the Smithsonian Astrophysical Observatory in Massachusetts. Dr. Gareth Williams noted that what Shepard had spotted were new moons orbiting Jupiter after tracking the objects for a considerable amount of time and submitting the data to the center of minor planets. Because to the newly discovered object's retrograde orbits, which orbit Jupiter in the opposite direction from the planet's spin, astronomers initially thought they were satellites rather than asteroids. The solar system's eight planets all revolve around the Sun in a counterclockwise orientation when viewed from the star's north pole. Moreover, six of the planets revolve in the same direction around their axes. Venus and Uranus are the only two planets having a retrograde rotation. Venus rotates almost exactly in the opposite direction of its orbit, with an axial tilt of 177 degrees. 
The axis of rotation of Uranus is almost parallel to the plane of the solar system due to its axial tilt of 97.77 degrees. There is no concrete explanation for Uranus' peculiar axial tilt. Yet, the common theory is that the skewed orientation of Uranus was brought about by a collision between an Earth-sized protoplanet and Uranus during the formation of the solar system. Most known dwarf planets and dwarf planet candidates have orbits that follow the direction of the Sun's rotation, but some of them have retrograde rotations, such as Pluto, whose axial tilt is roughly 120 degrees and causes it to rotate in the opposite direction from the planets much like Venus. Natural satellites in the solar system typically orbit in the same direction as their host planets and have prograde orbits, while numerous moons the size of asteroid often have retrograde orbits. Because small satellites often form through gravitational capture, the planets did not initially have these satellites. A passing asteroid eventually became gravitationally imprisoned and continued to orbit that planet. Many asteroids that become moons have a retrograde orbit in relation to the planet because the asteroid can enter the planet's gravitational field from any angle. With the exception of Triton, the biggest moon of Neptune, which is the only naturally occurring satellite so huge that it has this type of orbit, all retrograde satellites in the solar system are minuscule. Triton, according to astronomers, was once a dwarf planet similar to Pluto before it entered Neptune's gravitational field and became imprisoned as a natural satellite. While uncommon, asteroids can occasionally orbit the Sun in a reverse direction. This kind of orbit is possible for comets. The most famous example is the orbit of the Halley's Comet. Given that many asteroids that have reached Jupiter's orbit are unable to depart and continue to orbit the planet in a retrograde orbit, the fact that nine of the planet's newly discovered moons have this sort of orbit provides us an idea of how strong Jupiter's gravitational field is. The fact that they are typically stationed extremely distant from the Earth and are quite small is another trait that retrograde orbit satellites have in common. For instance, Jupiter's biggest satellites orbit the planet in the same general direction as its rotation. The smaller satellites are the last to be discussed because they are the furthest away due to their low mass and size, and they are where the satellites with retrograde orbits are found. The intriguing aspect of this is that, despite retrograde satellites orbiting in their own zone around Jupiter, there is one that eventually breaks the law because it circles in the vicinity of retrograde moons. Nonetheless, it orbits Jupiter in the same general direction that Jupiter rotates, much like the Galilean moons do. Scientists have given it the temporary name Valetudo because it is currently the only moon that has been observed to do this. This moon orbits Jupiter in around a year and a half, crossing the orbits of the moons that are retrograde in the other direction. As a result, experts think there is a chance that this tiny weird ball would collide directly with one or more of Jupiter's satellites. This would be intriguing for science because head-on impacts would turn things into dust and be a previously unseen phenomenon. The fact that there are still many small moons in a variety of orbital groups shows that the collisions that gave rise to them took place after the period of planet formation. In that stage, the whirling disk of gas and dust that later gave rise to the planets was still around the Sun. The new moons were most affected by this disk of gas and dust due to their size, which ranged between 1 and 3 kilometers. According to the Carnegie Institute for Science, if these components had been present when Jupiter's earliest moons met to create the current moons, the small moons would have spiraled toward Jupiter due to the drag produced by the gas and dust. The moon's existence indicates that they most likely formed after this gas and dust dispersed, which suggests that asteroid impacts persisted much later than previously believed. Little moons, known as pieces of once larger moons that smash with one other or with comets or asteroids, are abundant on Jupiter and Saturn. The same is true for Uranus and Neptune, but because of their distance, it is even harder to find any moons that could exist. As these moons are often only a few kilometers in size, scientists rarely bother to give them names. Since half of Jupiter's newly discovered moons have diameters of less than 1.5 kilometers, they have not yet been given names. 
Shepard, on the other hand, suggested naming the new weirdo Valetudo after the Roman deity of cleanliness and hygiene and great-granddaughter of Jupiter. The name was picked by Shepard as a tribute to his hygiene-obsessed fiancé who showers multiple times a day, which is an unnecessary but fascinating detail. Also, he mentioned that Valetudo was probably once a much bigger satellite. Even yet, because it travels in the opposite direction from the other satellites, it has collided and shrunk in size. The names of the remaining moons have not yet been determined, although it is anticipated that they will be associated with Greek mythology and the god Jupiter if they are. If you had the chance, what name would you give one of these new moons? Comment below with your thoughts.